right hello everyone uh, my name is vinod balakrishnan from adobe systems and uh, i work for photoshop engineering i'm going to talk about uh, digital typographic needs or feature re requests which happened for adobe design tools for the last 25 or 30 years I will also be talking about some of the legacy features in Adobe Design Tools we still maintain to keep some of the customer base happy. So when we talk about user request, there are some key influential factors which happen over the years. Type is one of the most widely used feature in all Adobe design tools. Those are Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. So we have been developing typographic features for last 25 plus years. And every paradigm shift in technology made some footprints in our design tools. So in other words, oh, sorry. So you can also say that uh, these design tools are some of the living documentation for the technology change which is happening. So the first uh, digital typography started with the print era, then we had a lot of uh, legacy fonts those days, you know, type fonts, then open type came, uh, internet, web, mobile platforms, and uh, LCD displays, which needed, uh, which demanded some rasterization needs. Then finally, the high DPI devices. At the end, I want to conclude with the democratization of typographic awareness. Uh, that's what is happening now. Okay, these are our design tools, uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, and uh, InDesign. And um, in Adobe, we make fonts that you guys all know. And uh, we also have our own cross-platform font engine, rasterizers, layout engine, and color management, if you think color is part of the typography. So let's get to the next slide. So in the early days of digital typography, print was the primary medium of communication. So we had a lot of uh, legacy fonts, and that was the time of type 1 fonts. The fonts were not cross-platform. but. In those days, color management was a huge deal. And uh, if you think about color management, it was kind of the technology everyone talked about those days, but it was kind of difficult to achieve. But thanks for the technology, it changes. And finally, it started working with uh, when, we come, when we moved over from prints to uh, digital content. I'm sure some of you uh, in the crowd must be aware of the huge uh, films and drum scans. Those, those uh, produce like a CMYK plates and cost around probably quarter million dollars. So it was, there was a time it was very popular, but they couldn't compete with Photoshop's technology for color management. Uh, they had to disappear from the market. So that's another challenge in early days was the, a lot of legacy fonts uh, and legacy encoding. We had Mac, Roman, Latin 1, those kind of things. And that really affected when we moved the document from one platform to another. 
So Adobe always believed in uh, pixel perfection and the complete round tripability of the documents. But these uh, um, legacy fonts which always come into the way. <clears throat> if you um, think about the international market, we had a lot of legacy fonts. For example, um, Arabic. There, was, uh, there were multiple uh, legacy encodings available before uh, uh, open type days. And uh, till recently, uh, we supported both open type fonts and legacy Arabic fonts on Adobe products. For example, a user uh, could lay out some text and pick another, either a legacy font or an open type font. Basically, under the hood, we kept all the uh, Unicode encoding, uh, text in Unicode encoding, then applied different transcoding to support the legacy fonts. So another uh, major challenge was creating the document on one platform or one machine and sending it out to the print houses. I will just uh, give a, a simple example of one of the workflow case. Uh, some of you must have seen this dialogue uh, which shows up if you open an old document, Photoshop document. So what it says is some text layers need to be up updated before they can be used for vector-based output. Do you want to update these layers now? This dialogue has saved many print jobs when documents travel between designers and print houses. While opening the document with the type layer, Photoshop recompute the text layouts and compare it with the previously saved layout data. If Photoshop finds a difference in layout, it will throw this dialogue. At that moment, the print house can say, do not update and print using all rasterized pixels. In fact, Photoshop saved both uh, vector data and rasterized pixels of each type layer. In case if the users uh, update, uh, click on the update button, Photoshop will relay out the text. It can cause new line breaks, and uh, a lot of bad things can happen. Typically, this situation happened when a different version of product or legacy fonts used between designers and print houses. But this rarely happens these days. Most of the font developers, they're pretty good at, like whenever they change the metrics information of a particular font, they change the postscript name. So we hardly come across the issues around this uh, triggered by the fonts. So, internet and web. <clears throat> so, the next influencing factor was internet and web. Um, so, internet brought Unicode popular. That's the time we started seeing the slow death of uh, legacy fonts. So, internet also brought a new set of users. They are called uh, web designers or content creators. So this is the time when the primary medium of communication, which was print and, which, and shifted to the uh, web or internet, Photoshop and Illustrator got a lot of new users. So there was a new set of users called web designers. So that increased the user base of type users in Photoshop. So web also brought the concept called web fonts and uh, then we started adding the feature called font syncing from the cloud. So when Adobe acquired Typekit, one of the number one feature requests was bring those web fonts or the corresponding equivalent to the desktop. So because that way users can prototype uh, yeah, in our design tools for the web. So, Open type features, that was one key influencing factor for a lot of features, additions to Photoshop and design tools. Um, I don't want to talk about what's the advantage of open type uh, because you guys are all familiar with that. So if you look at this, this is the character palette of Photoshop. If you see two row of icons, on the top row, um, the first one is for bold, for italics, and uh, small caps, and superscripts. Uh, uh, underlined strike through. Some of these 
are also part of open type features but if you look at photoshop even today all the icons on the top row it's always enabled so what we do is we synthesize these we synthesize four bold and four italics i know that designers don't like it we try to remove this feature but we got like a lot of complaint no you have to keep it so sometimes the customers are not up to you know i am not sure you know how to deal we synthesize you know superscript subscript too we still maintain it, this legacy features you know up in fact photoshop is only product maintaining for bold and for italics okay uh, lcd displays and anti uh, anti aliasing um, i can talk quite a bit about this maybe the whole talk i can talk about uh, so when lcd displays became popular so there was a request um, strong request for tweaking our anti aliasing features so if you look at photoshop we have a uh, we have a pop up menu and uh, we support different anti aliasing modes none sharp crisp strong the first five are actually completely cross platform and the last two are platform specific i'll get into the details so in the early days of web you know it's uh, browsers didn't have uh, anti aliasing support so the anti anti aliasing feature called none on the first one so that was the most widely used feature for web designers because they want to disable anti aliasing then uh, around 2000 time frame a lot of people ask for operating system style uh, rendering uh, so that means they want uh, photoshop type rendering should look closer to the system rendering so we went up back and forth with a lot of customers and uh, finally we understood they were asking for sub pixel rendering yeah. so sub pixel rendering is very popular actually there was some news about apple uh, is anyone from apple crowd yeah anyway um, so we didn't want to do sub pixel rendering because it's a photoshop we have multiple layer the background color always changes we can get color fringes with uh, sub pixel rendering um, so what we did is uh, we tried to mimic the sub pixel rendering what we so we started striking a glyph with this operating system calls which uses sub pixel rendering then converted into monochrome and brought it into photoshop layer and blend it and we did all the gamma correction and everything that's what is called the mac lcd and mac so if you take the screenshot this from a windows it's called windows lcd and yeah so so this was the story about the sub pixel rendering so i will tell you what's happening uh, lately because now the pic so i will come to the next slide so now the situation has slightly change now we, we have high dpi devices you know 4k monitors or higher whatever it is so anti aliasing requests are coming down significantly so we do track this in uh, data so what's happening is no more sub pixel rendering request i also want to tell you something about the hinting but this is uh, i'm not making an argument uh, I, i'm just throwing out the data so the last at i conference here um, it was in uh, montreal so i gave a demo of variable fonts in photoshop at that time we shipped five variable fonts and which is myriad concepts those are like concept fonts and uh, all the fonts were had limited set of glyph and uh, those fonts were not hindered but it's it's almost in a year you know i haven't seen any complaint from customers i'm not saying that uh, like hinting is bad or hinting is not needed but this is a fact and we did get other complaints about the fonts you know they are they have limited set of glyphs so we said it's concept fonts so i'm not sure what's a feature of anti aliasing i can say that the anti aliasing you know the people who change this menu item pick, picking the menu item that rate has come down so let's talk about the mobile platform that was a big uh, paradigm shift so it brought technologies like open type svg 
and uh, it was introduced to support color fonts, multiple colors in a single glyph. So the primary drive was emojis to have the emojis. That's why OpenTech SVG came. So then variable font. Uh, so variable font was first, actually the idea was discussed to reduce the payload size of the font getting downloaded to mobile platform. But later we added, you know, arbitrary instances and other things, you know, so we were all in part of the discussion. And uh, mobile platform also killed the legacy fonts and type one fonts. You know, you can't get a legacy font in a mobile platform. And also type, no, I don't think any uh, web cloud service which, which can uh, support type one fonts. And um, finally, the high DPI devices and social media made improved uh, awareness of typography. I will talk about a little more later. So I'm just switching the gear. I'm going to talk about an upcoming feature in Photoshop. So additional script support. So Photoshop, as you know, Photoshop has two composers. One is all the Adobe products, one for Latin CJK and the other one for uh, Middle Eastern and Indic um, scripts. So many customers around around the world, they use hacked up fonts to work around our script limitations. So how do we solve this problem? So half bus is coming to Photoshop. So Vedad is sitting out there. So half bus is an uh, open source, open type shaping engine, which is used by tons of platforms, you know, pretty much anywhere outside Microsoft and Adobe, they use half bus. And uh, we replace the, typically it is deployed with the uh, free type. So we replace the free type with our own font engine. And uh, we are adding, in the upcoming release of Photoshop, we are adding support for five new, new scripts, Thai, Burmese, Khmer, Lao, Sinhala. We'll be also supporting word and line breaking, spelling, hyphenation. And uh, so these are the five officially supported scripts, but we will also have additional shaping support for like uh, Mongolian or uh, any, any other script from whatever half bus supports. So that's, uh, so that then comes to my concluding uh, remarks. So what is the leading trends now in type, what we see in our design tool? So I would say there is one thing is a democratization of typographic awareness. I'm not sure whether it's because of social media or high DPI devices. The people like uh, the teenagers are talking about, they know a little bit about, about typography. If you compare with the, they know what font should be picked or how to pick a font which fits for their picture or somebody, some other pictures. So another trend is a lot more Custom font usage we are seeing. Uh, maybe there are a lot of other, there are a lot of tools around now to make custom fonts. I'm not sure, but this is another trend we are seeing lately. People are using custom fonts. Maybe the, uh, the design gamut is much wider now. So everyone is trying to find, uh, find out the right typeface for their content. So that's the uh, latest trend I have. and. Uh, we are in much better situation now. You know, it's a, a you know, all, all our, all the major players in the industry, they work together and we come up with the standards and uh, we have much more awareness about typography. And uh, that's all I have to say, good luck. And uh, this is my contact information. If, if any of you are from uh, Southeast Asia, which works on Thai, Khmer, Singhala, any of those scripts, you know, please, please come and talk to me. And uh, we are trying to get some information and build some relationship. Thank you.